This is how sake is handmade in Japan. So today we are in Kobe, Japan, and I'm gonna take you inside the Hakutsuru Brewery and show you how sake is handmade. But before I start, like always, if you want to see what I'm doing on the daily, check out my Instagram account. If you want to help support the channel, then definitely check out my merch. And if you guys have any questions about Japan or your Japan travels, then check out my Discord community. All right, let me take you on this tour. Let's go. Get your cups ready as I'm taking you to Hakutsuru, located in Nadagogo, Kobe, Japan, a flourishing sake producing area since the Edo period. Today, there are 1,550 sake breweries here, accounting for more than one quarter of Japan's total sake production. And this brewery, founded in 1743, is a top sake producer in the area, with 100 hardworking brewers crafting sake love not only in Japan, but all throughout the world. The factory is probably most known for Maru, the everyday Japanese man's day daily sake produced throughout the year. But today, I'm taking you on a different path. Produced only in the winter, you and I are going on a journey to see firsthand how these expert brewers use a traditional method of handcrafting its highest grade sake, Daiginjo, truly earning the title made in Japan. Cool, I've made it inside. This is always a fun part. Let's do this. And there we go. All rice, let's begin. Sake ingredients are pretty simple. Rice, water, and koji, a specific Japanese mold used for culinary fermentation. Rice suitable for sake though is a little different from the rice you and I eat, as the grain must be large, hard, and low in protein and fat to create a clear sake taste, which is why the brewers use the king of sake rice, Yamada Nishiki, grown here in Hyogo. It's polished down to 38% compared to standard sake rice at 70%, which requires even more delicate care and flawless technique to properly craft the highest end sake. Oh damn, and it all starts with Japan's typical morning radio taiso. The Kurabito, aka sake brewers, have a fairly strenuous day ahead, so they all start off with a morning stretch over loudspeaker. Once limbered up, the brewers wash and sanitize their hands to ensure the cleanest environment as possible. Okay, let's see what's going on over here. Splish Splash! This is where the brewers get crafting as each grain of rice is washed and soaked before it's made into sake. A critical point in the process as every second counts, literally. Even a 3 second soak would increase the rice water content by 0.1%. Equipped with hundreds of years of knowledge and experience, the brewers are able to finally gauge and infuse water into each grain of rice in a manually controlled process of buckets of water and rice. Apparently back in the day the brewers would sing to time the process, but these days they use a timer to craft a more accurate sake. Oh cool, I think this is where they steam the rice. Time to get turned up! So a day later, the mushimai begins, the steaming process. The brewers load yesterday's soaked rice into a giant rice steamer called koshiki, which can steam up to 350 kilograms, 770 pounds of rice in about an hour. Unlike most commonly used factory rice steamers, which steam rice on a long conveyor belt, the pressure of the koshiki can be adjusted throughout the entire steaming process, which allows for experienced and highly skilled brewers to manually control the end result of the steamed rice. Apparently, this handcrafted sauce Sake has a long fermentation process, which requires a rather hard outer rice shell, otherwise it would turn into mush along the way, but soft enough center for the koji to grow. The koshiki allows the brewers to attain this perfect balance. Hi, what are you doing? Oh, can I ask what you need to be most careful about in this process? I see. Can you eat this rice? And how long have you been making that ginjo sake? Cool, thanks. So now that the rice has been seen, they're about to take it out. Let's pop this top already. 
Oh, I guess they have to coordinate a bit before they get the road on the show. Apparently, this part of the process needs to be done quickly to ensure that the rice cools down properly and the moisture evaporates. And from here, the steamed rice is separated for different stages of the sake crafting. Koji Productions, Shubo and Moromi. No cap, it's steaming. Make no mistake, the rice is extremely hot, yet the skilled brewers still use their bare hands to spread it, as it's the only way for them to truly judge and feel the conditions of the rice. At the perfect temperature of 40 degrees Celsius, 104 Fahrenheit, the rice is moved to the Koji Muro, a specially designed room to grow koji which is hot and humid, kind of like a sauna. It's critical for the brewers to spread out each grain of rice evenly so they cool down at the same rate. Once spread, the rice is rested for 2 hours with the temperature and humidity perfectly controlled. Unlike mass-produced sake where the rice is cooled by machines, rice cooled in an open room requires master brewers who can detect the slightest of changes in the rice by feel and sight alone, and then can skillfully make the required adjustments. Okay, let's go! We've made it to the tiny kitty stage where the koji spores are spread onto the rice. Nobody move! Everyone inside watching must remain completely still and silent as the koji spores are so tiny and light that any movement could blow it onto the floor or cause it to be unevenly distributed onto the rice, ruining the entire batch. Koji mold itself is used to make many traditional Japanese foods such as soy sauce and miso. In Japanese sake, it produces the alcohol by breaking down the starch into sugar, also known as sakarification or malting. Excuse me, so what's the deal here? <laughs> ほんの一粒一粒に品種がつくように手で揉んで作っています。ああ、ですね。ステックトゥヨーハンズ。麹の米っていうのは結構さばけと言ってスイブンが周りに少ない状態ですので、ほとんど使わないですね。I Dope! Now that the brewers have evenly spread the koji mold throughout the rice, they wrap the rice up to help lock in the moisture and promote the growth of the mold. Apparently, the table itself is a scale so the brewers are able to quickly measure how much water content remains without having to unwrap the rice. So before we continue on, I want to give a quick shout out to the sponsor for this video, Squarespace. If y'all don't already know, Squarespace is the number one way to build your online presence. In fact, I use Squarespace for my website, Tokyo Zebra. Here are just some of the reasons why I love using Squarespace so much. Whether you're starting your passion project or building a business, Squarespace has all the tools to get it done while also looking ultra sleek and professional at the same time. They support numerous portfolios and gallery designs which you can customize and even password protect so the right people see your work. Use its fully integrated blogging tools and commenting features such as threaded comments, replies, and likes to help engage your community. And my personal favorite, built-in analytics to see how your visits, unique visitors, and page views trend over time. There you go, go to squarespace.com today for your free trial when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com com forward slash paolo from tokyo and get 10 percent off your first domain or website cool that said let's continue on with this handmade sake adventure so just behind me is the rice all wrapped up let's see what happens next <laughs> Here we go again! Overnight, the rice naturally gets harder and sticks together, so the brewers must use their bare hands along with a sifter to separate every single grain of rice called kirikaishi. Hot sake! The brewers make sure to separate every last grain. Once completely separated, the brewers lay rice into wooden trays called koji buta to further encourage the koji growth. By separating the rice into smaller piles, it's easier to control the temperature and water content of each grain, ensuring that the mold grows at the same rate. Now, the koji rice must rest for one more day, but that's exactly the opposite for the brewers as they continuously monitor the temperature, humidity, and water content throughout the day and even through the night by regularly shuffling the trays and mixing the koji. Some of the brewers even live in the brewery to make it all happen. Apparently, the hardest part of growing the koji is controlling the conditions and environment. One miscalculation by the brewers could result in the koji mold growing too fast, too slow, or stop growing altogether, tending to the right Rice is a tireless process but necessary to handcraft the highest quality sake possible. 
And this is how the brewers adjust the koji in the trays. To create the most ideal environment for the koji mold to reproduce, brewers not only shovel the trays, but also mix the piles of koji rice itself in certain forms at different stages of the growth, like making a dip in the center or creating these lines. Excuse me, what are you doing? I see. What's the most important thing when you're doing this? ま、48時間から50時間という中で、ま、いかにその中仕事をどこのポイントに持っていくかというのを考える。これはやはり一番のポイントになってくるかなっていう。why do you need to use wooden trays? He also says the rice would quickly fill with carbon dioxide and the water content inside wouldn't evaporate evenly. So the trays allow them to finally manage the koji growth. After almost two days of endless adjustment, the rice has fully matured so the brewers can move it out of the koji muro. The koji rice itself has taken a completely new form and texture as each single grain of rice has now been infused with koji mold. And look at this, it's getting all zen garden up in here for the cooling down. So now that all the rice has been laid off to cool, all we have to do now is just wait. We're finally here! I feel like we've grown so much since the beginning of the video. Well, at least the koji has. And now it's time for the rice to become alcohol. I think I've been waiting my entire life for this moment. Matured rice koji, water, and yeast are mixed together to produce the shubo. Oh wow, the brewers are using locally sourced Roko Mountain subsoil water with its uniquely high mineral content in Japan, which helps the growth of koji mold and yeast. Another reason why brewing is so popular in this area. The water itself is a key ingredient to creating the brewer's signature sharp and clear sake taste. Watching this entire process is really making me want to drink right now. But cold rocks, we gotta keep this video going. So the brewers use their own special blend of yeast to produce their highest quality handcrafted sake. In fact, brewers store about 400 different types of yeast, each producing its own distinct flavor, which allows the brewers the ability to expertly mix them in order to develop an exact flavor. There's actually so much going on all at the same time. I'm having to run back and forth. This is getting tiring. Anyways, it's time to create the moromi, fermenting mash. Rice, rice koji, and water are added three times over four days. But depending on the sake being crafted, the mash can be produced all at once or even adding rice and water up to seven to eight times. The brewers rely heavily on their historical data analysis to produce a consistent sake, but slight changes in the environment, weather, rice quality, etc. must be manually accounted for by the brewers, meaning that crafting sake is less like a static ratio of mixed ingredients, but more of a blending of technique and ingredients to create a consumable living piece of art. Huh, I wonder what's behind that door over there. Oh cool, they have the tanks up here. Yup, we're in heaven storage room, where all the different stages of sake are kept. Brewers regularly check each tank and make the necessary adjustments here to ensure that the sake is fermenting correctly. Bubble, bubble, toil and trouble if you serve me this sake double. Let's get out of here before I find a cup. So one of the difficult things to capture in this video is the wonderful aroma of this sake. It just smells so good in here. I wish you guys were here to smell it. Alright, they're getting ready right now for the final part. Yay, the Dai Ginjo Sake is finally ready! <laughs> After almost a month of fermentation, it's filtered in the traditional Japanese method called Fukuro Tsuri, literally meaning hanging bags. Usually this process is performed by machines with pressure, but for the brewer's highest quality Dai Ginjo Sake, they do it all by hand, taking advantage of natural gravity to filter the sake. Damn, that's some smell good in the air! Finally, the Toji, the master brewer in charge of the entire production, has the final taste. 
With his approval, the sake is bottled up and ready for shipping. Although a massive undertaking for the team of brewers, only a thousand bottles are handcrafted each year, making it an extremely sought after sake all around the world. So that's how sake is handmade in Japan. If you guys like this video, help me out and hit that like button. And if you guys want to see more videos like this or anything related to Japan, hit that subscribe button and the bell button. I'll catch you guys in the next one.